Hi guys. Hi. Good evening. I'm Mike. I'm Erin. And this is our Wyoming Life uh, Ranch Talk live Q&A session. We've got really no agenda here. <laughs> <Topic>. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been a, it, I guess, I don't know, it hasn't really been a busy week, but it's been a horrible week weather-wise. And yeah. it seems like every time you turn around, any job that takes five minutes usually takes all day long for some reason here lately. So um, we want to thank you guys for coming out and uh, and joining us uh, this evening, taking time out of your guys' busy schedule to hang out with us. That's very cool of you guys. Um, I noticed uh, there was Lakeside Ranch. Now, I haven't seen them before, oh. and I'm guessing they're well, a new subscriber. Thanks for coming out. We have a ton of new subscribers, so uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, we'll be sure to answer them. Some of you guys may have heard those answers before, and if you have the answer to somebody's question, Feel free to uh, to you know clue them in uh, because obviously we can't get to every single one. No, um, we've got our, our mods online tonight. Uh, Nash guy is here along with uh, uh, Blake from Guy in Wyoming. If you haven't checked out his channel, check that out. And uh, one other guy, what's Matt is here. <laughs> Matt is here. So uh, thank you guys for coming out and uh, making sure everything stays kosher. Everyone play nice. Everybody play nice, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that uh, we ran into with our last live stream, uh, what, two weeks ago, was a lot of people said they didn't get the notifications. Um, if you're having trouble with notifications, just go to where you subscribe to us on our channel page there and click that little bell, and that uh, supposedly makes sure that you're getting notifications. I did get the notification on my phone this time, so yeah. hopefully more. And I don't think either one of us got it last week I didn't get or it last week time. before, so. I don't know if I have the bell turned on, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. Totally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, today we figured that we would kind of do the Q and A thing, and also we do have some cool stuff here that I'll show you right off the bat because I, I was I was actually a little freaked out. We were supposed to get the uh, prosthetic foot for the peacock uh, today, and I was a little worried that it wasn't going to show up because of the weather. Sometimes mail up here gets uh, delayed, so I was like, I told Erin when she went to town today, I said, make sure you go by the post office because I told you know, 20,000 people or 17,000 people. Did you that, tell that many people? Well, I, I told everybody on the, that, you know, as the little bell clicked, everybody that got the notification said that we were going to talk about the peacock's foot. So uh, before we get that far, Erin does have her giant cup of tea and she's feeling just a little bit underneath the weather. Yeah, so Yeah, I'm getting a cold. We The kids have been sick. Well, Grace has been sick. So, yeah, you know, they like to share. They do. So. Lo lovely thing about having kids. So... Here we have the peacock foot. Now, this was made uh, by Jonathan, who uh, follows us on Reddit. We have a subreddit, um, which is basically a little community on Reddit uh, where people can come and ask us questions and stuff like that. And he saw the story about the peacock, and he put out a couple feelers to find out, you know, what kind of foot that he could make for the peacock. And I don't think Jonathan actually made it. I think he might have actually found somebody else to make it. But um, he, he designed it. I'm guessing he's some sort of engineer or something. And this is actually originally made. Uh, it's a prosthetic for a stork, uh, which is pretty close to a peacock, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I've, I've never been that close to a stork. Have you ever been that close to a stork? Heck no. You had three kids. Where'd they come from? I didn't see the story. You didn't see the story. <laughs> Neither did I. So anyway, uh, the basic gist of this thing is I'm going to try to get this up here as close as I can. Um, and I think we're going to try to put this on him within the next couple days. And probably Sunday's video will have we'll some, have some of this in. We need some traction on the bottom. Some traction? Some cleats? Maybe. Or something? Some I don't know. Yeah, it is or... pretty slick. So this is the, the actual foot. Um, we have to size it to him. So these pieces, I don't know, this is kind of hard to see, but uh, <laughs> these pieces will actually go on the foot and then, let's see if I can do this, there we go, and then on to the peacock once it's sized. Yeah, so is down that... here we can cut this. Right. He still has his knee, so we'll try and line up his knee where these circles are at, and then this moves up here. Right. Um, and then this is all foam lined, and we'll zip tie it on him. Or zip tie it. Yeah, we'll figure out some way to get it attached to him. <laughs> so anyway, that is the peacock foot. He's actually doing really well. He's been uh, living in the peacock or in the in the chicken house here lately. Um, he flew. The, I, I, we did try to keep him in the barn, but keeping anything in the barn is sometimes a little bit of a trick. And uh, he flew the coop there, went to the coop, and then the other day I was out feeding pigs and he was hanging out. Yeah, over there I see him the out by the pigs and his girlfriend's with him. I saw her flying around. She's outside. 
Yeah, she's always outside. She. Uh, I she saw a big giant outside. bird flying out by the shed. I was like, oh, peahen. Peahen, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, that is the story with the peacock. So this weekend, uh, or here within the next couple of days, I'm going to try to get this on him. We'll we'll try to film as much as we can, yeah. and uh, see how he does. See how he does with it. I think the 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 tentative plan is because once we put this on him, uh, we actually have to keep him somewhere contained, and we'll probably end up trying to keep him in the shop or Just maybe for a couple of days some, somewhere contained so that he can kind of get used to it. If it's going to work, it you know it may need to be resized. We honestly don't know. Um, so this weekend's a, video could be a total flop. It's a too, trial but. run. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> so anyway, that's, uh, that's what we've got there. Um, the peacock, what else was I going to talk about? You've got gardens coming up. Yeah. Lots um, of gardening stuff coming up. Yeah, it's farmer's market this week. Um, hopefully tomorrow if the sun comes out, I'm going to be able to pick spinach. Um, it has to be above freezing in order to cut the spinach. Otherwise it will just wilt and die once it unthaws. It'll be, it'll turn into mush. Um, so, but it's supposed to be 34 and sunny, so it should be 50 or 60 degrees in the high tunnel. And yeah, next Thursday we'll have a gardening video. I am redoing how I am planting the big outdoor garden. Um, it, we didn't really touch on that much last year. No, so. so I've done, you know, just in the past I've done a lot of like row planting. You put in a row of seeds. Um, this year I'm going to do more beds and hopefully have less weeds to grow, but I don't need to grow the entire length of the garden. So everything's gonna, the row length is gonna be shortened, but there's gonna be more rows. Um, so I have to do a lot of math, um, cause I need to order seeds need to happen. So it's a lot of reconfiguring. I think I'll actually grow, I think I'll have more square footage of crops than I did just doing a single row. I did it last year with beets. I put three rows of beets super close together worked really great. I did one early weeding in the middle and then they grew and they crowded out the weeds and it worked great. So we're going to do that with every, with everything that I can do it with. So, but it's a big, huge reconfiguration. I have a plan in my brain. I have to get it on paper, show you guys how that process works and then start selecting. There's a, you know, I have different varieties of stuff that I grow every year and they work great. There's a few things that I'm always on the elusive quest for like the best corn seed. Um, so I have a stack of garden catalogs and I have the internet, so we're going to go seed hunting. Right. <laughs> so. Exactly. I had something I was totally just going to talk about and it just slipped my mind. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, no, go ahead. We ordered 60 baby chickens the other day. Yeah. Aaron did order 60 new baby chicks. Um, we've got um, the chickens coming. That'll be coming in a video here before too long. They're shipping on April 16th. April 16th. I got the invoice today with the ship date. So, yeah, um, yeah it'll be end of April when yeah. we do the chicken video. But we got 60 different, we got 60 chickens and eight ducks. Yeah, Aaron wanted some more ducks. We only have one. So. Yeah, it's because they can't run fast enough and the coyotes, <laughs> you know, or the fox geese, or The geese else. do fine around here. The, the ducks. I think the geese scare the heck out of the, yeah. the foxes and coyotes. The yeah. ducks have more problems, but yeah. we're down to one, so. They're lower. We actually bought these these Peking, these Chinese Peking ducks, mm -hmm. and they're the fattest little ducks you've ever seen, and they couldn't run from Lincoln. I mean, they, they just, they, they, they can't move. <laughs> yeah, I didn't so, get any of those. No. Um, I got... Four, uh, excuse me, four different kinds of ducks. Four different kinds. You got those runner ducks, those stand-up yeah. ones. Yeah, <laughs> I got runner ducks. Those are kind of cool. So uh, the other thing I was going to talk about, we had a question about buying meat. And I get this question almost three times a day, at least. <laughs> I get emails <laughs> uh, about buying meat. So <clears throat> um, in the past, we have shipped meat. Um, it ends up being ridiculously expensive. Uh, for example, we ended up shipping um, some steaks to Los Angeles. And the shipping cost on it, I don't remember what exactly it was, like $138 uh -huh. to ship two steaks um, to Los Angeles, three-day uh, three day air. And then we have to pack them in styrofoam and we have to do the, uh, the freezer pouches or the dry ice yeah. or whatever. So anyway, it was ridiculously expensive. But if you subscribe to the Herd Report, uh, which is our weekly newsletter, comes out every Monday, you know this already, but um, you can sign up actually on our website. Just put in your email address and your first name. Hey, what's our boom. website? It is rwyomonglife.com. Yeah, if you type in our Wyoming Life, it's you'll gonna find it. you'll find us. <laughs> um, so the Herd Report found out about this a few weeks ago, but we are actually going to be offering uh, beef jerky this year online yeah. to order to be able to send 
send out to the United States. We're not sure if we can send it internationally. I don't think that works. But I shipped a sticker to Belize today. That was expensive. So. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, we had, uh, on Patreon, you can you can you can support us on Patreon, and if you if you support like if you you know like two dollars a month or whatever it is, uh, you can get a free sticker. Well, we had a guy from Belize who did that, yeah. and so we sent him a sticker. Aaron went to the post office today. Fourteen dollars to send an envelope to Belize. We lost money. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> Not a big deal. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so the beef jerky thing will be coming out here before too long. Uh, we Domestically. Domestically. <laughs> we, uh, the lower 48. I don't even know about Alaska. We can probably ship to Alaska. We can though. probably <laughs> ship to Alaska. I mean, exactly. If it fits, it ships, man. Uh, so we've got that going on for us. Uh, we are butchering steers when? Do you remember? Middle of March. Middle of March. Pig, somewhere, somewhere. Uh, the pigs go on the 26th. Yeah, the pigs month. are going pretty quick, so a couple more weeks. We'll be talking about that as well. So, yeah. yeah so there's the beef jerky thing. So that is good. Um, does anyone know Mike's Gmail? Why? Why? I'm guessing he's asking for my email address. I would guess. Okay, our, our email address is uh, r o u r w y life at gmail .com. So you can always do that as well. All right, uh, another question. We don't have any dogs. We do have a dog, actually. We have a dog. Her name is Lexi. She's a yellow lab. Um, she's, she's 11 years old. She's having kind of a rough time right now with winter and stuff like that. She's uh, actually had one knee replaced already. She's swallowed kids' toys and had surgery to have them removed from her intestines. Uh, just a rough luck dog, but um, she's a good dog. We do have a plan to to get a cattle dog, but we kind of we kind of want to wait until Lexi's gone to do that just because bringing another dog in is, is rough on her so yeah. um i have never worked with a dog before so i'll probably require just as much training as the dogs do yeah so, so lexi's a house dog you're right she's a pet yeah and there's there's always a question about you know when you have working dogs like that are they going to live in the house are they going to live in the shop are they going to live in the truck well, do we I just don't... turn them out with the cows i mean i don't know what we're going to do yeah it's going to be it's it makes be me sad to think that it would live in the shop the um, dog yeah I mean, yeah, the cats live in the shop. They're cats. Well, they don't even live in the shop. They live in the barn. They're cats. They try to live. We try to keep them in the barn. <laughs> we have uh, Kittler, our little cat that you always see in all the videos, that the big puffy one, I guess she's not little, uh, the puffy black and she white one. She is little. She's little on the inside. <laughs> yeah, she's all there. Uh, but she, she tries to pop into every video that she can. She actually has taken up, like, residence in the shop. It's hard yeah. to get her to leave that now. Is. And she's going to have to be broken of that pretty quick. So... Uh, I did. I know a guy that uh, I was talking to that lives down the road that has a dog, and he got a dog from somewhere in Texas, five thousand dollars for a fully trained cattle dog. And he said, you know, obviously if you have a dog, you're saving yourself the time of having to yeah. hire somebody, you know, or the money of having to hire somebody and that kind of thing. But he said the same thing that he had to get trained. He had yeah. to go down to Texas, and they showed him how for to do sure. it, and, and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. I know that Blake has a, a dog trainer, you know, that he can that we can work with there too. Um, so there's, there's plenty of options. It's just one of those things that, um, uh, I've always wanted a cattle dog. We just, with Lexi and, and, you know, we just decided to, uh, Yeah, we had Lexi when we came back to the ranch. So right. Yeah. We, we had just... Lexi before we were ever married. Yeah. 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 So our first kid was a dog. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you see any questions, just holler out. Okay. Cause I'm just, we're winging it tonight, man. This is just totally off the cuff. Okay. Um, let's see. What weight do you butcher your steers? Um, we like hanging weight to be around 550 to 650 pounds is what I like hanging weight. Um, live weight, you lose like 40% when you go from live weight to hanging weight, so you can reverse do the math. Yeah, so, so we're looking anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 1, pounds is usually what we're going for. And um, we just kind of eyeball it. Sometimes Mike will load them up and take them to town and weigh them. Take the trailer in, weigh them. Unload, come home, yeah. unload them, like, go nope. back to town, <laughs> weigh the truck and the trailer again. Um, I do have a platform scale that we can put the steers on. The problem is that there's, you know, a foot and a half of snow everywhere. Yeah. So platform scales really don't work in that situation. So it'd be nice to have a scale. I would love to have a scale because I could run pigs on it. I could run. We've got a little scale that sometimes, last year you would weigh pigs. Pigs yeah. are ready though. They're fat. They're, they're, ready, ready, to yeah, they're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, the other thing that I was going to talk, oh, Nell, I noticed just popped in here, and I've seen Nell every once in a while. Nell, this, she asked if there was, if, if she missed the oh, Peacock right. update. Nell, this is the Peacock's new foot, and we will be attaching it uh, within the next couple days, and then we'll put out the video. Sunday. On Sunday. Um, but we got the foot. This thing is a pain in the butt. I cannot do this. 
Yeah, something like that. So I'm going to hold that up there for you to see now. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, farmer's market questions. We do have far farmer's market this weekend. Yeah, farmer's market is this weekend. Um, is there any tips or hints to getting started in farmer's market if somebody wanted to? Uh, I mean, you started on farm. You started in farmer's market by just taking what you had left. I over. take what, oh, you know, just we had our family garden. I took what we had extra of and I made some jam. So I would say look into your state laws. Um, fruits and vegetables, fine. Um, if you... Every state, it's different on like what you can can, what you can bake, what you can home produce. So learn your laws. Um, but fruit and vegetables, totally fine. Just start growing. Grow what you love to grow. Um, I have tried for years to grow green beans. I, I <laughs> cannot, green beans. I cannot, you want to hear Aaron cuss? I, Talk about green yeah. beans, man. I oh. cannot grow green beans. But then like when, I, when I do grow them, I hate picking them. So then I'm like, why did I do this to myself? So just grow what you love and... Be prepared to eat the leftover. <laughs> one, one year I was working at the shop. This is a few years ago. And Aaron had green beans in the big garden, which is, you know, what, 200 feet from the shop or something like that. I'm working in the shop. And I can hear her out there cussing at something. I don't know what she's yelling at. There's a rabbit in the garden. Okay. Remember that rabbit that Ate one year? Ate all my green beans. Ate all the green beans. And man, you were just yelling. And the rabbit just sat there and looked at you. Took it, it would run. Yeah. It would run and hide underneath like the squash vines and under the gourd vines and stuff and hide. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest pain in the butt. My beans look beautiful. Come out the next day and I just have bean sticks. <laughs> yeah, that darn rabbit, man. He had and you. he ate all the, the beets, too, as they would pop up out of the ground, as they would get big enough to pop out of the ground. He'd eat the tops off the beets. So that was really annoying, too. You'd pick a beet. Oh, it looks beautiful. And then you'd look at, like, you'd, you know, you'd spin it around and look at the other side, and it would be eaten. It'd be no beet. So then the pigs had to eat it. The pigs. <laughs> and the pigs love the garden, man. Yeah. They, they're all about the garden. And, and so it, we're selling pig, or we're, uh, we're going to be taking uh, pigs to butcher Excuse me. To the end of this month. Yeah, the 26th. How long before we get new baby pigs? Um, it'll be summer. It'll be like June. I think, yeah, last year it was like June. June or July. Um, whenever my person that has pigs, she does like a June. And our pigs are actually brought up they're from Nebraska, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, so she usually has some available in June, sometimes July, sometimes first part of August, so. Right. Um, uh, really quick, I want to uh, tell our mods too. Like, if you see a really good question, guys, feel free to to uh, to post it back to us because um, we do miss questions all the time. So, if you guys see a really good question out there, um, throw it back in our face a little bit if you can. Um, one question that I saw was about the internet. Um, and about the internet? Everybody always has questions about the internet because we're still riding horses out here and and, oh. and peeing in the outhouse. Um, we have internet. We do, and we have an outhouse, so it works out well. You do. Well, no, kind of no. do. We have 5,000 acres of outhouse. Not that you would use it. <laughs> you have an outhouse. <laughs> Lincoln's going to have an outhouse. Lincoln is going to have an outhouse. Um, internet out here uh, is, is actually done by radio. Uh, we have radio internet. There's a tower about two miles away that shoots a signal to us. Uh, we have a dish on the house. goes back and forth. It's actually not bad. We get, what, 50, 50 megabytes, megabits, megabytes per second. Yeah. So it's and it's, we're supposed to be getting upgraded to like two hundred or something. Are we really? I think. Oh wow. It's I'll coming. Take that. Yeah, that'll work. So yeah, we have really it was slow when we first moved out here, but it's yeah, gotten much it's better. It's gotten better. So yeah, that's yeah. how and, and cell phone service is the same way. Cell phone service is pretty good here. Um we have a uh, great cell phone service right here around the house. You get you start getting back on the place a little bit, it does get kind of sketchy. Yeah. Um but there's there's a couple fields where you don't have but you always you can always text. So, yeah, you can usually text them, and then you drive around in the circle. It goes through when it gets to that spot. That yeah, it gets to the spot through. where you have service, <laughs> and then it pops through. So, um, no, we don't use any. Uh, uh, Jones asked. If, uh, Jones Largo asked if we use any electric fence. We actually don't. I have never really messed around with electric mm -hmm. fence. I don't use it in the garden or anything. We don't use it at all. No, no. I've been zapped by some electric fence. Well, that happens. But no, I've never used it. Um, did you guys need a business license to get into the farmer's market from Brennan AG? No, our market doesn't require a business license. Find out who runs your market, who your market managers are. They'll generally have a contract, and it'll answer a ton and ton of questions. Um, check with your state's Department of Ag website. Ours has, like, all of our kind of the overview of what's good and how to get going in market. Yep. So. Um, somebody asked what mods were. That's a good. That's a good question because I use words like that. And, uh, mods are actually moderators. They're the guys that are uh, out here policing the whole thing. And you know, it, and it's good. It's good that they're here in in ways um, because we do end up with some weird things that come up every once in a while. So those guys are actually invaluable. They save us um, from having to do it ourselves, and also from you guys having to see the crap that you don't want to see anyway. We get so. some spam. 
So, we do. That's cool. Spam. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Spam. I guess. <laughs> I call it crap, but whatever. Uh, Mark Hollenbeck loves his Art Wyoming Life t-shirt. Thank you for buying with well, us, Mark. You. Um, you can get t-shirts on Amazon.com. Just go to Amazon.com, search Art Wyoming Life. Uh, we've got three. T I actually should put more t-shirts up. Yeah, I should, should make more. We can have... Uh, through Amazon, um, I've been told we can have 10 different t-shirt designs. I have three up there. If anybody happens to be a, a, an amateur graphics designer and would like to design t-shirts, let me know. And uh, we can throw them up there and get you some credit off of that, too. So If you go to our website, too, there's a shop button. And yeah, there is. through that, there's some sweatshirts and a few other things too, right. through our website. Yeah. So Yep, exactly. So... Uh, Hubby and I are going to visit the Sun Hill Station in Minot. Is there a calendar for farmers markets we try to stop by on the way from Arizona? Christy, Christy Dunham, um, you yeah. right now. Aaron does a year-round farm. Now this is funny because Aaron actually runs the farmers market uh, along with a gal named Megan who is just awesome. Um, but we have a year-round farmers market. Yeah, and so that's. How does that work? It's the third Saturday of every month, um, November through June. And then July 14th, we start every Saturday and we go till October 13th. I know those dates because I taped an email about it today. Somebody asking those same questions, the mm -hmm. vendor. So yeah, July 14th starts our every Saturday. Um, we're open from 8 to 1230 in our local college parking lot. Right. And we're there. Yeah. In the Oddly wintertime, enough. we're inside, obviously, and open from 9 to noon yeah. inside the college. It's weird. We had uh, at the last... Was it the last farmer's market that we did inside? Uh, a couple came up to us yeah. and, and said that uh, they had went down to Texas. To, so they're from Gillette. They went to Texas to visit their kids, and their kids in Texas watched us. Yeah. So they came back and then came to farmer's market. It was really kind of a weird, like, yeah. uh, like you know, Carmen San Diego thing yeah. that you had to travel from here to there to find <laughs> so out about what's going on. Here. Yeah. yeah, I went to Zimbabwe and found out about you, and then I came back, and I lived like a mile and a half from you. Um, so yeah, that was really cool. And you know, when we're at farmer's market, we get all kinds of people that stop by and want to say hi. And yeah. We love it. It's cool. And uh, you don't even have to buy anything. They you know, help in the same way as well. So uh, the business name of our ranch, our ranch actually never really had a business name. Gilbert, when he was alive, it was always the South Ranch. Um, it, it, that's just kind of what it became. And it just stuck. So it's uh, the South Ranch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it takes me like anticlimactic, but that's all there is to it. Um, some ranches have really cool names. I, I don't know. Well, ours, I, ours does not. Yeah. <laughs> have you been to Addie Collins? Have you been to North Dakota? I don't know if they, sometimes people aren't asking us questions, but I'm guessing Addie says, have you ever been to North Dakota? Erin, have you yeah. ever been to North I Dakota? I have been to North Dakota. Yeah. Uh, my mom is from Towner, which is 50 miles east of Minot. Um, and so I spent a lot of time in Towner and Rugby and Minot, and I went to college in Grand Forks for three years. Right. So, yeah, I've been to North Dakota a few right. times. Yeah, we've been there quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not the best. It, it's, it's actually not a horrible drive from here to Minot, or to, to, to not to Minot, but to Rugby or, or Towner. Yeah, it's okay. But it's a... We it's, drive through Minot. It's kind of a long drive, so... Grand Forks is worse. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind North Dakota in the summertime. I don't. It's think, beautiful in the summer. I hate it in the winter. Wintertime, I don't think I can do it. So, um, I love the new subscribers. New subscriber here. Do you expect or plan? Do you expect to plan or plan to love, add love, acreage love. to your operation, lease or buy, Captain Davy? You know, if right if, an op, if a chance came up to buy something attached to the ranch, you know, that's every rancher's dream that they want to buy attached property. Um, very rarely does it ever happen. And leasing, you know, I know I've got friends of mine that, that ranch out, out past us that, you know, they've got lease land over here and they've got lease land over there and they've got lease land over there. Um, it, you know, they're on the road, they're running around all the time. Um, you see Gary drive by every morning and he's got a bale of hay on the back of his truck and he's running into there. And yeah, it's, it's, and it's yeah, tough our neighbors have, they live down that way and they lease up here and they hay up here and they move cows up here. And so they, they're moving equipment back and forth and, and moving cows down the highway sometimes too. So yeah, we're good right now. We're extremely, we're extremely lucky to have everything we have locked into one area. Um, not to say if the neighbor was going to sell that we wouldn't try to figure it out be tough but um you know i can sell some blood or something <laughs> <laughs> sell some plasma like we're in college again. yeah sell some plasma 
<laughs> I'm gonna have some drinking money. Um, okay. Yeah, Andres Andres Rodriguez Nash guy threw this up again. How much does it cost to be a rancher? Yeah, we made a video called the, the cost, cost of ranching. It came out ranching. December seventeenth. I know that because I looked that <laughs> up today because I got accused of some things with that. Um, but uh, yeah, December seventeenth. You can go back. It's called the cost of ranching. It actually runs through everything. I thought I did a pretty good job. Some people didn't think I did a good job, but. Um, you know, obviously you can't hit on everything, you know, people can say, well, what about insurance or what about electricity? You know, all that's built, you know, is in there, but, um, I think it's a pretty, pretty good breakdown. It's a, it's they, a start. And another thing is to look at that as, you know, I'm here, you know, if you're in Georgia and, you know, we're paying, you know, if you get land here for seven, $800 an acre, um, you know, in Georgia, you're buying land for what? Whatever it costs in Georgia. Yeah, I mean, but it could be ten thousand dollars an acre. You gotta figure out, you know, it takes thirty acres per cow calf unit here. And we didn't make up that number. We got accused of that a lot too. Oh, yeah, that is yeah. a real number done by by University. several research studies done by the University of Wyoming. Thirty acres per cow calf unit. You know, in another part of the country <laughs> Sorry, I just saw a comment that made me laugh. <laughs> so another part of the country, you're, you're hopefully not going to need 30 acres. Some places, some people commented that they need even more than 30 acres. So right. if you're looking to buy a cattle ranch, visit with your extension office and find out how many acres it takes to run a cow cow. Exactly. Uh, this, this brings me right into the next thing. Uh, Humphrey Family Holsteins, um, Ryan, a really good, a really good guy. Um, if you're if you're interested if you're interested in starting your own ranch, I mean Ryan is kind of the He's guy starting. to watch. Yeah. He's right there in the beginning. I mean, he, literally, he is he is the greenhorn of our group um, that we have going on. I want to really have a group. We got Blake, we got Ryan, <laughs> we got, <laughs> we got us. so. But you know, Ryan, you know, Ryan is right there in it. And, and what made me laugh is I was talking to Ryan the other day, and he's got donkeys. Oh yeah. And I yeah. asked him, I said, Why do you have donkeys? Well, in Texas, where he's at. Uh, donkeys will keep the coyotes away from the cows, which I didn't know. Yeah. I never knew that. So Ryan taught me something. He has three donkeys. I think we should get a donkey. He had. He wanted one donkey. <laughs> they brought him three donkeys. He paid for one. They said, you know what, just just have the rest. Apparently, and uh, and and anyway, he just said back. Uh, he commented back there that said he changed his mind. We can have all three donkeys if we want. <laughs> okay, are you going to bring him to us? <laughs> he actually offered to bring him to us at one point. Uh, so that's a long way to go with a donkey, but. <laughs> Yeah, and then I, I told her when you told me about that, or when when Ryan told me about the donkey thing, Erin said she wanted donkeys. So, yeah. I tried to convince Grace that we, our middle daughter, daughter Grace, is four. And I tried to convince her that we should get a donkey, and she just stared at me like, no. She she, uh, she wants a house bunny. She wants a house bunny. She saw a picture today of a, on our Facebook page. Somebody sent us a picture of a donkey licking a baby oh. donkey. I don't know what baby donkeys are called, foals. Little asses, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, it like, and she's like, Why is that horse eating that other horse? And I was like, It's not eating him, she's, you know. But anyway, that's Grace, you'd have to know her. And we should get the kids back in on one of these one of these days. I don't yeah. know if they would try to, they're up at my mom's house, yeah. It's interesting. Um, I saw one, did you think something about would my mom ever join? I don't know if she would or not. She's with the kids. Would your mom join in on yeah. a live stream? Would I don't know, she's probably watching. Um, yeah, she usually watches. She so, usually hi, watches mom. Yeah. <laughs> um, that reminds me. I, this is a funny story. I'm going to tell this really quick because this is a funny story. Okay. Um, when I was, okay, I worked in radio, obviously. Everybody kind of knows that before we came up here to the ranch. But when I was probably, I want to say maybe 10 years old, as a Cub Scout, we went on a field trip to the radio station in, a, in my hometown. Mm -hmm. And... We met the DJ, and there was probably five or six of us standing in the in the DJ booth. And the DJ said, "Hey, who wants to talk on the air?" For some reason, I got pushed towards the front. I was kind of <laughs> a little kid, yeah, anything. and I got pushed towards the front. And I leaned down to the microphone and I said, "Hi, mom." <laughs> that was it. Got off, uh, went home. First thing out of my dad's mouth, "What? You can't say hi to me." That's he me. was the one listening. My mom wasn't even listening. Funny story about that is I ended up actually working at that radio station years and years and years down the road with that same DJ who pushed me oh, to, uh, to get to get on the air. His name was Ken. He actually passed away in the booth. Very weird story. Oh gosh. Yeah, he passed away while he was on the air. All right. Anyway, well, let's answer some questions. <laughs> yeah. <bad news. laughs> anyway. Um, okay. Braden Clem, do you hunt? Uh, no, we don't hunt. No, we've got freezers full of beef. We have cows. Um, we have we have lots of hunters that come out to the ranch. 
um, which is probably the main reason I don't hunt because I don't have time because I have to babysit. And if anybody's watching that comes out and hunts, yes, I babysit you. Um, <laughs> no, we, we come, they, they come out, we have a good time, we, we hang out, and uh, we have a lot of hunters that come out in, uh, in October. We have bow hunters that come out in September. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, both, uh, we used to have the wounded warriors that came out and hunted. Yeah, that was, well. that was, that was lots of fun with those guys. So, um, but long story short, no, I don't hunt, uh, myself, uh, unless I can let, you know, as long as I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, I'm trying to start some cows on 50 acres. Is it a good idea from Jones Largo? You're just going to have to figure out how many, find, do the research on how many cow calf units per acre. That's not really something we can tell you without some more details. And again, go visit your local extension office, talk with your local university, other ranchers in the area. Yeah. 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 Uh. We, uh, <clears throat> we get this a lot because it's, it's kind of funny because, you know, different areas of the, of the United States, everywhere has, just think of, you know, your grass grows different, different. everywhere you go. Yeah. You know, down south, you don't have any problem. You know, you could have grass grow like crazy. On Ryan's place, it kind of looks like our place. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it just depends on where you're at. And that's where that stocking rate, which is the amount of cows that you can have per acre, uh, comes into play. And that number is almost the most important number that you can, you, you sure. need to know as a rancher is your stocking rate. How many cows and calves, because they call it cow-calf combination, or cow calf yeah, care. Or animal unit. Or animal units. Learn that one too. Um, animal unit is a thousand pounds of animal. So, uh, you know, a, a cow is 1.2 animal units if they weigh 1,200 pounds. This totally gets into all the, the math and stuff. But um, there, there is all that. And it's, it's more complicated than what people think. But that, that animal, that stocking rate, you need to know that. Yeah. So, um, landowner an antelope hunts. Uh, we sell landowner antelope hunts. You have to get we your tags, tags through, the ta yeah. through um, Game and Fish. Yep. Yeah. What brand boots? That's from General Lee. I like that name because I was a huge fan of the Dukes I'd had when I was a kid. Um, yeah. uh, I wear uh, uh, Ariats. Ariat boots. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Does the ranch have a brand? Yeah, you, we have a brand, of course. Um, yeah, we've said it before. It's the Able Bar brand. Um, is what we use on yeah. the ranch. And Mike so. and I have a, a, a brand too. Yeah, so, we yeah, have a brand as well. Yeah, so. you have to. Have, you know, well, do you? You don't have to have a brand. You don't have to have a brand. You no. don't have to brand cattle. I mean, honestly, if it comes down to it, if you're fine with not branding cattle, you don't have to. Um, but um, branding helps identify your cattle. If you do have, you know, something get mixed in with with a neighbor, that makes you know that can be a huge mess. Also, it's a tracking uh, a mechanism when you sell calves that they're able to track them through the food chain mm -hmm. and and keep track of where they're going and what they're doing. So. It's a good thing. Eventually, I imagine it's all going to move to RFID tags. When it does, expect the price of hamburger to go through the roof. Yeah, I don't um, know that it's going to move that way. I think we're a ways away from that. I don't know. In, in, in Europe and stuff, there there are some countries that are moving their RFID tags. I think we're but, a ways away from that. Um, I hope we're a few ways away, maybe several years away from that, just because the infrastructure on small ranches to do that, it's going to it be It is expensive. hard. You know, you have to have the reader. You have to, you know, and honestly, like, um, if you, have, obviously we have cow ear tags in, and in some ways RFID tags would be nice because if you could scan a cow, you would have all their information, <laughs> but you have to scan a cow to do that. And if I'm out, if we're calving and I'm out trying to, you know, scan a cow that just had a calf, that's, you're going to, well. Yeah, you'd still need ear tags. You'd still need ear tags. Yeah. But still sometimes they do pull them both out. We double ear tag and we... We switch to a, a higher quality brand of ear tags that do much better, but they still fall. The cows get them caught on fences. Yeah, they stuff. get them caught on fences. They get them caught on whatever they can. Cows are bad. They're okay. they're notoriously bad animals. Uh, <laughs> they are. They're 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 bad. They're naughty. They're naughty. <laughs> um, all right. I don't know what cows per acre in New York is because we feed out cattle out of a barn, TNT cattle. Yeah, if you're feeding, that's a whole different situation. That is. It's totally yeah. different. If you're buying hay or you're putting up hay or whatever, that's it. Yeah, right. I mean, if you look at it this way, during the wintertime, I've got 150 some odd cows that never leave 10 acres. Yeah, they hardly ever leave Hardly anywhere. ever leave 10 acres. And I'll feed them. Sometimes I have to feed them out because they just, they're not going to, today. Yeah, you circle them around. Yeah, I move them around and try to give them clean areas to eat and stuff like that. But like today, I went out, it was minus 15 degrees uh, wind chill this morning. And uh, they have a big, it's a 40 by 100 foot, basically three-sided shed that they can hang out in, get out of the weather. 
Um, fits all of them in there. They're snug, but they fit in there pretty nicely and they can all stay warm. And this morning I went out and fed and I think I saw three noses, you know, stick it out like, okay, he's going to go feed us. We're just going to hang out in here. They <laughs> exactly. weren't going to leave, man. Until I had to cut, the hay down. Until I got the hay out and then they came back. And, and, and I think actually, if you don't follow us on Facebook, uh, we post, was that this morning? Yeah. I lose track of my days. <laughs> there's, a <video. laughs> uh, there's a video on Facebook. If you don't follow us on Facebook, head on over there and, and check it out. But there's a video of feeding this morning on Facebook. And those cows, they didn't want to come out. And you know, honestly, neither did I. <laughs> yeah, morning. the wind was blowing 40. It was snowing like crazy. Yeah. It was, it was, it calmed down this afternoon and got better, but it was bad. Right. So. Exactly. Um, yeah. Do you have uh, a question in mind? No. In my thumb. My eyes twitching. <laughs> I don't know if that's a sign of anything, but yeah. <laughs> um, are you guys having any calves yet? Um, no. Next month. That yeah, was from we, the farming life. We are. Yeah, we're starting calving. Um, heifers. Heifers would be mid March. We're gonna have. We're probably gonna have a couple early ones. Um, so any day now, we could have a calf. We're keeping a pretty close eye on them. We'll start calving cows um, towards the beginning of April, but we'll have some early ones. So soon. Yeah, it'll it'll all be starting. I talked soon. about in my my pork chop video. Like this is the calm kind of before the storm. Like we talked about baby cows during pork chops. I talked about <laughs> just that you know things are going to get really busy. It um, is kind of the calm. We need the storm. to. There's a lot of. I need to get lettuce in the high tunnel that's down in the basement, and you know, so we got some prep work to do to get garden season kind of kicked off. I've got a ton of stuff on my end. You know, I need to order a high tunnel. I need to order seeds. I need to start seeds. Um, we're you're going to start calving. Weather is maybe going to turn warm eventually. It'd be nice to have some warm weather. That'd be cool. And then um, it's garden season, and then before too long, it's market season. Yeah, so. I mean, if you if you've been with us long enough to to go back and watch some of the older videos, right now we're putting out three videos a week. We're doing the project list on Tuesday. Uh, we've got a video on Thursday, whether it's this live stream or Aaron puts out a, a cooking video or a garden video, and then we've got the ranch video on Sunday. During the during the spring and summer, it's it things really kind of get hopping around here, mm -hmm. and it's going to be interesting to see how, how that's going to work out. Videos a week, but we're figure it out. So yeah. Um, all right. How often do you leave the ranch? Every day. <laughs> we well, do. technically, I guess. Yeah, we've got kids that go to school in town. Um, Mackenzie rides the bus to school. She's in first grade. Uh, she rides the bus to school. Uh, we don't let her ride the bus home, and the reason is because it takes almost an hour and a half for. Or it's over. Half, it's about an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, to get home from school, so we usually end up going and picking her up. Uh, so that's our trip to town. One of us will take that trip to town every day. And Grace is in preschool. Grace is in town. preschool. Yeah, so we're in town. Yeah, every, I mean sometimes on the weekends we don't go to town, but yeah, pretty much every day. Right. Yeah. So, so every day we go to town. Now, if you're talking about getting away from the ranch, like miles away, oh, where <laughs> we can't, you know, if we're in town and somebody calls and says, "Hey, you got cows on the highway." I can be back out of here in, in five minutes. Um, well, not five minutes, but you know, a generally quick amount of time. Uh, we can occasionally, especially this time of year when things are a little bit slower, we can occasionally escape and go to. We do day trips sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it might be you know quick quick trip out of town, but that's not without making four different phone calls to make sure that the neighbors know we're going to be gone. Somebody can keep an eye on this. Uh, we call Blake in case he can make the three hour trip up here to to put a cow back in. <laughs> Um, yeah, we don't, it's, it's, it's an interesting lifestyle and something that we never, we go on vacation in June after the gardens are in the ground, yeah, usually, calves are branded. Yeah. Then we have a quick vacation then. And that's again, the same thing. We have to find somebody to take care of the place. So, mm -hmm. uh, the brand of cattle tags that you mentioned earlier, those are called cow tags, C-A-L-T-A-G-S. Um, They're awesome. Search for one. They're really good tags. Uh, they don't fade. They don't lose their markings. And they have numbers on both sides. So yeah, on the back side. Yeah. yeah. So, so you if you're smart enough to put them down low enough, so you can see that this is the problem that I did when I when I tagged a lot of those cows, I tagged them up too high, and then you can't read them from behind. I tagged a lot of those cows. Actually, well, that was your fault, then. Okay, yeah, I, I did a lot. We prank checked and re-tagged everything, and I tagged a lot of those cows, and they were only tagged in one ear. So. Um, if you ever tagged an adult cow, there's a lot of ear to get through with the tagging gun compared to a calf. Um, and so I would try and put the new tag in the existing hole because, you know, just try to be nice and not give them two ear piercings. But How come the cows can have earrings, but I can't? I don't know. Every cow, though, <laughs> had one ear that needed a brand new tag in, into it. And um, 
I'm not the strongest girl in the world. And by the end of the day, I could not, like my hands were like, I had like some arthritis hand. Like I could, I couldn't like stretch my hands out and I couldn't squeeze my hands because it was, I couldn't do it by the end of the day. Like that, those gun, the tagging guns are really hard to use repetitively. Yeah. If somebody, if anybody's ever tagged cows, especially cows, because they are thick and thick thick ears. Um, You know, I tag cows all day long and it doesn't really bother me too much, but yeah, it's an, it's an interesting deal. But anyway, back to my back to my question. How come the cows can have earrings, but oh, I can't? No one said anything about your earrings until this week. We I have know. been I don't know videos what is up for with that. It's so funny. We go a long, long time and nobody says anything. And so we made videos for thirteen months now, yeah. and nobody said anything about Mike earring, Mike's earrings. And we got three or four not so nice comments about the earrings. I know you would think it was just <laughs> evil. <laughs> so that's know. cool. Whatever. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Pick another question, babe. What do you recommend for budget farming? Budget farming. Uh, all farming is budget farming, I think. <laughs> yeah, all, all farming and ranching. Try to avoid debt as much as you can. Start small. You know, stay away from operating loans if you can. If you can. It's understandable that sometimes you do have to get an operating loan. And, you know, you got to buy equipment and stuff. Right. Don't ask Blake from Guy in Wyoming how to buy a tractor on the internet. <laughs> so. Oh, that's mean. Oh, that's just actually evil. He, found, he has some great. He has a really great video on what not to do. So actually, if, check he out did. how not to buy a video or how not to buy a tractor on the internet. That was like the most classic line ever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, um, you know, feel free, start as small as you want. Um, you know, get chickens. They're like the gateway animal of the are. ranching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, you really want the life of a cow. Come on, Blake. That's a threat, man. That's available. Somebody, somebody boot him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting deal. Uh, you know, you can start out with chickens. They call them the gateway animal. They uh, totally are. <laughs> but, you know, you, if you start out small, uh, I tell plenty of people, I get, I get this question probably three or four times a day, too, is how do I start a ranch? And it's, it's one of the hardest questions I ever have to answer because... First we of all, you didn't don't know start a ranch. We didn't. We didn't start. We a ranch. came back to a family ranch that was already operating, already existing, already had equipment, already had cows and stuff. Right. We didn't know what we were doing. The ranch knew. The what ranch it was, doing. was here. We were the idiots that were thrown into the ranch, <laughs> like, you know, into the three ring circus yeah. kind so, of thing. So yeah, I mean, so we can't we can't really give super great advice on how to start a ranch because we we've expanded and you know the, none of the farmers market stuff was here. No. None Chickens of the beef, none of the here. pork, none of the chicken was here. Um, but we didn't start from scratch. No. So. And, and you know, and my father-in-law and Aaron's stepdad, Gilbert, was lucky when he was ranching and he was alive. Um, they had met, they had minerals here. Mm-hmm. You know, they had methane. They had oil. And, you know, you were able to run a ranch. Different, much differently. Much than differently than you, than you can nowadays. Nowadays, it's all about diversification and you have to be able to... To, to sell beef and sell pork and, and sell vegetables and zucchinis and, you know, whatever else you can because there's no other way to do it, yeah. honestly. And, you know, in our situation, you like I said, you can be somewhere else that has much better grass, much better stocking rates, and you can probably make a perfectly good living on it. You never know. Yeah. So. Uh, Bucky Bats, did you all do 4-H in school? Uh, no. Um, I did 4-H, but I did the loser 4-H. I did... <laughs> Uh, I did photography oh. in 4-H. I did, uh, I don't even know what it was. It was like art, where I, I actually uh, put something into the, the fair one year. It was uh, architecture drawing. Oh. Uh, a friend of mine, her dad was an architect. So I went with him and worked with him, and we oh, did like cool. an architectural drawing. I think my mom still has it actually hanging somewhere in her house. An architectural drawing of like a log cabin, and I think I got a, a blue ribbon for that. But no, we never did animals. Uh, Aaron was... I was a city kid. City kid. I grew up in Montana, uh, small town in Montana. Uh, my graduating class, there was 11 people in my graduating class. Um, and then I quickly joined the military and got out of there and then and then got into radio and ended up in, in cities and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, very much not really our life before we came yeah. at all. Um, Christina Cogswell, chickens are the gateway. We started with seven four years ago and now have over 650 in a booming pasture oh poultry business. Yeah, you went all in on that. Wow. That's awesome, though. Um, I guess, do you um, do you do meat chickens or just eggs? I'm curious. Yeah, that's I want to do eggs. I want to do meat chickens and turkeys, but we're a few years away from that. But that's probably our next big expansion. Yeah. Turkeys. Um, 
Uh, I'm you handle the question. Okay. This is awesome. I'm just like waiting back. Do you guys participate in any marketing programs like natural or organic? Uh, no, I'm not certified organic. I didn't know there was a certification process for natural. I don't know. Maybe there isn't. Um, I like to just... I like to do what I need to do for my crops to make them be the healthiest that they can be without the government telling me what I need to do. Um, but that means that we, I use, most years use no chemicals. Um, if I do have to use any chemicals, it's um, very, you know, one time thing to kill one very specific pest on one specific crop. Um, we, we use no herbicides in the gardens. What was that stuff you just got? It was like made out of chrysanthemums. Yeah, um, I got some pyrethrin spray. I have a few aphids in the spinach that I will have to take care of. But I'm going to harvest, you know, tomorrow and then beginning of next week I'll spray and then I won't harvest again for a month. So we use chemicals and pesticides responsibly and no herbicides, but no certified organic or natural or anything at this point. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, I like Skittles too, man. Skittles rock. <laughs> Okay. Actually, I like I like Reese's Pieces better than I like Skittles, but yeah, uh, I'll do the Skittles. Um, Jones Largo, Peacock still alive? Yeah, he's fine. He's in the chicken house. Sunday's video will be about the peacock. Peacock's foot. <laughs> um, when did we preg check Nash guy? They preg check in August, I think. Um, I'm guessing somebody else asked about preg checking. We preg check in October or November. Right. After yeah, we, sell we calves. usually preg check after we sell calves. Uh, that way, we don't have to sort twice, and. Uh, there's a video on it somewhere out there in the world about preg checking. Yeah. Pictures of Kyle. Was, <laughs> Kyle was miserable that day. Yeah, oh, actually, we preg checked heifers, and then we preg checked uh, the cows after that. Yeah. So we had two preg checking videos, and Kyle was miserable for both of them. <laughs> um, yeah. Christina Cogswell, um, she's the chicken gateway person. Both we raise Cornish <laughs> Cross and Sasso Naked Necks Heritage Breeds for meat and Rhode Island Reds for eggs. I looked at the naked neck chicks in the catalog. I think they're ugly. <laughs> That's cool though. Um, and Rhode Island Reds for eggs. We've had, I've had Bantam Rhode Island Reds. They were mean. They were mean. Mean little chickens. Yeah, I did we not... had a Rhode Island Red rooster, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, a Bantam. Oh my God, he was <laughs> a giant pain. He thought he was just, he was like that. He had that little guy syndrome yeah. thing going on. If he could have, he would have drove the biggest Cadillac he could get his hands on. He was just, he would come after you like crazy. He didn't last long, yeah. but yeah. I don't even think I took care of him. I think something else got mad at him and took him, took him out. Know. So yeah. yeah. Um, do you plant strawberries? No, I don't have any strawberries on the farm or on the in the gardens right now. You've talked about it though. I yeah. Didn't your mom do strawberries? My mom's you? gonna plant some strawberries in her yard, so we'll see how they do. Um, I don't know that they'll survive the winter. Super great. I don't know. She's gonna plant them in her yard. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the first berry that we'll do will probably be like raspberries, out in the orchard. Okay. I don't eat raspberries, so you're good. <laughs> Let's see. Really quick, though, I'm going to check and see how many people are here, because this is interesting to me. <laughs> 300 people gathering with us today. That is oh, awesome. So Thank cool. you, guys. I really do appreciate yeah. that. Um, obviously, the growth has been crazy, but it's yeah. been it's been a learning curve for us um, along the way. But it's it's really cool. I, I do appreciate everybody else, everybody that comes out and watches anything we do. Um, I was kind of surprised, like with the putting the cake feeder on the trailer. You know that 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 many people were interested yeah. in putting a cake feeder on a trailer. It, but it's awesome. It's 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 one of those things that um, came from an idea from a viewer, and that's the thing that I like. I always tell people if you can give me an idea that's not going to cost me a million dollars, I'll get. Uh, let's say lower than a million. Let's say <laughs> it's not going to cost me like 10. like ten. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy to try it. I mean, we have uh, we have a lot of fun trying out different people's things. Uh, Krista had the idea for putting the the uh, garbage can over the oh the, the hydrant, hydrant and filling. I mean, that was Krista's idea, and I and I don't even I think I gave her credit for it. I never did hear anything from her, but um, <laughs> it was her idea. Just one of those random comments said, "Hey, why don't you try this?" And and we tried things like that, and I think. Um, you know, to be able to, we don't think that we're too good for anything mm -hmm. at this point. No, really. we're open to all, I try all kinds. There's kind a lot of things. things that we can't do. I mean, and, and sometimes things that seem simple, like, um, I don't know. Why don't, why don't you add heat to the high tunnel? Like, we get that a lot. Um, it's another layer of plastic. It's a blower. It's electricity. It's, it's heat. circulation fans. It's propane. We don't have natural gas. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big, complicated equation not to say that we would never do it but that's not a simple fix it seems simple just add heat to the high tunnel your crops will do great um 
totally, totally right. But That's awesome. Huge, huge infrastructure change. Why but not just throw a tent over the entire place <laughs> and just heat it all, and then you'd be good to go. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Why don't you buy your cake bulk instead of bags? This is something I've dealt with since I've had since we put out the cake feeder. Actually, the original cake feeder episode, which was back in September or October. I don't know. I don't know. Whenever I put the cake feeder on the gator, um, <laughs> we don't buy. We don't have a bin for cake and cake is a little bit different. Um, it's actually stored in like an overhead bin that you can drive under, pull a lever that dumps into your cake feeder. Um, some people do put it in regular like grain bins, but then you have to have an auger or something like that, or a shovel, shovel or shovel uh, <laughs> to get it out. Long story short, we don't have one. Um, we looked at getting one, even when Gilbert was alive, we talked about getting one and it was kind of one of those things that it's a lot of money. Yeah. And that's a big infrastructure thing too. It's a concrete pad. It's a bin. Right. It's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of money. But you did the math the other day on how long it would take to yeah, pay I for a bin. Yeah, I did do the math. Because so, we do, you do get charged for the cake and the bag. Like there's a bagging fee associated. Right. So with we pay an extra two dollars per bag for the for the cake. Which sounds like a ton of money. Which sounds like a ton of money. I think I figured out it would take us seven years worth of cake to pay for the bin. A, a, a bin. Which so, would be Makes great sense. to, you know, obviously we're going to keep feeding cake for more than seven years, but, you know, it comes down to do we have the money at the time to pay for a bin? Right. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of money right now to pay for a bin. Yeah. Not, you can't pay for it. Over, I mean, I guess maybe you could finance it, but we try not to do stuff like that. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're not big on financing. Um, that's a little rough. It's kind of like that, that whole counting your chickens before they yeah. hatch type of thing. So, yeah, we're going to stick with bag cake for now until yeah. we win the lottery. Case Farmer <laughs> wants to know if you've ever had to pull a calf, Aaron. I've helped. You have. Aaron's been right there in the thick of things. I have not been oh. shoulder deep, but I have helped. You haven't? <laughs> no. Oh, that's something we got to do. <laughs> uh, that's a fun experience. It's, it, and you know, honestly, it's not that bad. It's cold outside. You it's have warm one, you're, You have one warm arm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we pull lots of calves. Uh, I don't like to use mechanical pullers. I'm more of a, a you know, being able to feel what's going on. And, and um, we've ran into situations before where we have had to um, take cows to town uh, because we've had cows, you know, a calf that's totally stuck with that hydrocephalus calf. Um, it had a, it had water on the brain. It just, there was no way it was going to pass through. I think we've only taken two cows to town. What was the other one? Twins. Oh yeah, stuck twins. Twins that, that were coming one one leg from they each. They were all twisted up. One yeah. leg from so there was two legs sticking out, but it was one from each mm -hmm. twin. And that was like our first calving season, so we did not. Know yeah, that was rough. I was like, hey, there's two legs. Oh wait a minute, there's two more legs. Oh, there's two more legs. <laughs> yeah. How many legs does this calf have? Um, in fact, when we had the hydrocephalus calf, the vet came out. Uh, one of our neighbor vets um, stopped by and felt up in there, and she said, "I'm pretty sure you have a calf with two heads." And that's when we decided. We spent to take a it lot down. of time trying to palpate and figure out what was going on. Yeah, we ended up having yeah. a calf with just a giant, giant noggin, and it wasn't any smarter than any other calf. But they did not have to see section art. They got it. No, they got it out. It was dead, but they got it out. So, yeah, we pull lots of calves. Um, sometimes it works out well. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, it's just one of those things. But uh, you do have okay. to deal with What's it. What's the brand of the tags again? Cal Tag C A L T A G. There you go, Cody. Yeah. Okay, um, stuck calves suck, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely awesome. You know what's weird too is when you're when you're trying to get a calf out, and I don't know if anybody else has ever had to deal with this, but when you're trying to get a calf out and the calf starts stucking on your fingers, yeah. that's weird. Well, you gotta check if they're alive. You do, you do, I mean, it's one of those things, but it's just kind of odd feeling. Like, wait a minute, there's, there's like way too much stuff going on here. Let's get, you know. Yeah, but there is nothing better than, I can yeah. tell you this, and hopefully we get to experience this. Uh, last year, I really, I don't think I had to pull a calf last year. No. Yeah, I mean, I think you like assisted a yeah, little bit, I, but I didn't did. have to get out chains or anything. This year, like hopefully that. we don't have to pull a calf either. But if we do have to pull a calf, I hope you guys are right there with me. Because there's nothing better than when you get that calf out. And literally, you're behind a cow, obviously, because that's where it comes out. <laughs> and you're pulling. And that calf comes out fast. So nine times out of 10, that calf comes out on top of you. But still there's, you know, there's nothing better than laying there with a calf and it's, you know, you're covered in goo and blood and afterbirth and that calf is just, it's alive and you, and you actually feel like you, you, you know, you've accomplished something. Yeah. So. And that's a huge accomplishment. Every live calf, you know, helps continue the ranch on, you know, right. we, we need them. There are, there are cash crop. So, yeah. 
Uh, we have a lot of questions here, and we're rolling right along. Yeah. But uh, Valentine's story. Do we have a Valentine's story? No. We don't even have an anniversary story. <laughs> we were married. We got married before we came to the ranch. So we got married on, and you're going to yell at me if I'm wrong here, June 28th? Yeah. Okay. June 28th is our <laughs> wedding anniversary, which happens to be, once we came to the ranch, it happens to be right in the middle of hang. Uh, so we have not actually had an anniversary because I'm on the tractor until dark. Um, so usually our anniversary consists of Aaron bringing me food on the tractor. Yeah. Which we should do this year. We could have like a little picnic lawn hang or something. With the snakes? Cute. No. You're not going to hang out with the snakes? <laughs> There's another really funny Aaron story. When, when we first came here, Aaron used to help me out all the time. Well, we, had, we didn't have kids. We didn't have kids. So she was with me all the time. She was helping me hay that first year. And Aaron uh, jumped out of the tractor to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> And there happened to be a snake right where she chose to do so that. So I got back in chatter. Yeah. So that was a funny, that was a funny errand running across the field. <laughs> I just uh, ran back. I just got back in the track. Well, yeah. <laughs> then you drove really fast. So, yeah. As fast as you can go in the tractor with a rake. <laughs> it's fun. I think, this, I think this year is going to be a lot of fun. I, you know, last year when we started doing this, obviously we started this in, in January and we kind of been building up and, and learning what we're doing along the way. And I think this year is going to be a whole different experience for you guys, hopefully, um, to be able to be with us and, and see a lot more of the things that, you know, we weren't able to film last year, yeah. whether we didn't know. So we had, when, when we first started this, we had this idea that every time I would go out of the house, I should wear a GoPro. Yeah, you never do that. Horribly. <laughs> just a giant pain in the butt. Um, but we're getting better at it and being able to do that better and be able to bring you guys into the fold. So I think it's, this year is going to be a lot different. And a lot more fun, hopefully. Yeah. Questions? Um, <laughs> What's the average price of per ton of hay going for now? I actually just, I didn't tell you this. I got a call. Uh, we have hay brokers in this area who are, um, I don't want to say anything bad about anybody. Um, hay brokers buy hay low. They sell it high. Obviously, they have auctions just like they do for cattle. Um, I got a call from one the other day. And uh, it's right around that $180 a ton. Uh, price price range. Plus trucking. Plus trucking sometimes. Depends on how you get it through. Some people yeah. will deliver it, but yeah. It's pricey. Hay is expensive. Especially and that's the other bad thing that I hate about, you know, if we have a great year, hay is cheap. I don't know why. Because everybody has hay. <laughs> you don't have hay, all of a sudden it's really expensive. Yeah. Um, but if we run out of milk, they don't jack up the price at the grocery store because we ran out of milk. That's not how it works. No. Ethan Briner, what do you, what will you do with the ranch if the girls not decide not to pursue ranching? Um, We're going to call Ethan. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have the girls and then we have Lincoln, our son, too, who is, you know, two and a half. So he's a long ways away from that. Um, hopefully one of them will want to, you know, ideally one of them and their families would want to do the ranch side of things. And one of them would want to do the, the farming market side of things. Um, and the third one's going to have to figure something out. I don't know. Um, if they all three want to be here on the ranch, we'll figure it out. If none of them want to be here on the ranch, I think, you know, when you're a rancher or a farmer, there's no such thing as, like, retirement. So no, somebody asked us a long time ago, how long do you plan on ranching? Or as long as we can physically do the work. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't ever foresee, I don't think, like, I'm going to turn 65 and be like, okay, I'm done. No, I mean, and Erin's not like that anyway. Erin, every year, she's got another, cra not crazy idea, but, you know, she wants a milk cow, which can help out. You know, if you, have a, if you have a bum calf, you can, you know, give them milk. Um, but, you know, you got plans for that. you got plans for greenhouses. You've got, yeah. we've got, we, lots, we've got of lots of crap we want to do. And that's not, and getting older is not going to slow us down, I don't think. I mean, I think we're, we're going to ranch 30 or 40 years. Our kids might have to pry the ranch out of our hands. I don't know. <laughs> that's kind of how it seems to work. <laughs> but yeah. if they don't want to ranch, they don't want to ranch. They're never going to be forced. And if, yeah. like I said, if all three of them want to do it, we'll find a way to diversify and create a way for all three of them to do it. So. Yeah, and I'll force them to get eggs from the chicken house, and I'll force them to work while they're living here. But if they, when they're gone, if they don't want to ranch, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. If Kenzie wants to go on and become a doctor or become a Chicago be a police. police officer. She wants to be a police. Right now, she wants to be a Chicago <laughs> police officer for some weird reason. Um, but yeah, she's all hung up on the Chicago thing. But uh, <laughs> you know, whatever they want to do, that's what they want to do, and that's that's great. Because I mean, I you know, I never would have thought that we'd be doing this. No, so gosh, no. There's always, you know, 20 years down the road, kid can turn, you can turn your life around, and or not even turn your life around, but literally turn your change life your back. life. <laughs> yeah, and next thing you know, you're back at home. I mean, it can happen. Yeah. So. Well, I think Mike and I will be here and as long as we can be here. Right. So. I would hope, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, for, uh, Melissa Will Williamson says, farmers do not retire, they turn to mulch. <laughs> down with oh, that. that's funny. Yeah. Uh, don't mulch me, please. 
Don't put me in with those vegetables. I just don't, I don't think I can live with that. <laughs> rancher's compost. Yeah. 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 No, we're, yeah. I had a, uh, I knew a rancher one time that had pigs and he was telling me the story about when he dies, he hopes he does it in with the pigs. So he has oh, a stroke gosh. with the pigs. So they feed like, him? I was just like, that is the weirdest That's thing I've ever do. heard. Yeah. I watched that show Deadwood. <laughs> oh yeah. I remember that show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Matt, Erin McKenzie will grow out of it. I Well, I don't know. It's been about two years of her wanting to be a police. And yeah. that is pretty long for a seven-year-old. Right. And now she's got viewers that send her stuff from Chicago, from Chicago <laughs> telling her she, you know, Chicago police officers are really cool. So uh, you never know. Uh, Carson Wright, I live right outside of Casper. We were there yesterday. It sucked down there yesterday. Oh, my God, so Carson. <laughs> I'm surprised you still live in Casper. We uh, we were driving into Casper and the, the marquee or whatever, that, the thing above oh, the highway. The road sign. The road sign. Uh, you know, 70 plus mile an hour winds. I was like, are you kidding? We just go home. In Florida, this would be a hurricane. <laughs> in Casper, windy. it's Tuesday. Um, just insane. I, I don't know. And it how. wasn't windy here a little bit, but by the time no, we got Aaron checked, it was like 13, blowing 13 miles an hour here and 70 miles an hour in Casper. So just insane. Uh, if you could relocate your ranch to any other part of the U.S., what would it be? That's funny, Hector, because we've actually talked about that a long time ago. Well, not even that long ago, like yesterday. Uh, <laughs> if you could pick up the entire place and plant it somewhere else. Honestly, where the wind doesn't blow. <laughs> Aaron was talking about that, where the wind doesn't blow. Let me um, deal with the cold. Today, it was cold and windy and so we had probably below zero wind chills all day i don't mind cold i don't like the bitterness that comes with the wind yeah the wind is horrible yeah so no wind but yeah if we could pick up the ranch put it anywhere else the problem is wherever you put it you've still got issues yeah you know you don't you may not have wind but you may have bugs or yeah we don't know, have bugs you may have <laughs> you know you may have predators you may have anything else i mean everybody everybody that does this seems to have their own challenges and you know, that's what kind of, you know, ticks me off when we talk about our challenges and people are like, oh, you're full of crap. And it's like, no, everybody that does this has their own challenges. And whether we're talking about the cost of ranching or we're talking about, um, you know, the weather or anything else, it doesn't matter where you're at. Everybody has has their issues that they have to deal with. And it doesn't even have to be cattle, whether you're raising chickens or, or pigs or goats or water buffalo. I talked to a guy yesterday about water buffalo and how big of a pain in the butt water buffalo can be. Um, um, everything, yeah, everything's got its pros and cons, yeah. and, you know, it's all, we always say this, like, it's always, you know, everything's relative, so, like, what we struggle with here is going to be easy for you down there, but there's other things, it, that, there's things that you struggle with that we don't, so right. it's hard, you know, those questions of, like, how do I start a ranch, or, you know, how many cows should I get, and stuff like that, it's hard for us to answer, because it's going to be so much different for you than it is for us, but, you know, like, taking care of your animals is the same, and the, you know, the common goal of, of, you know, getting the ranch, you know, from sun up to sundown and taking care of things is common regardless of where you're at. But right. Um, uh, I just saw a question about super chat and I didn't talk about this. Um, you can, and maybe this will be your chance cause we're almost done. We're going to wrap things up. But if you have a question that's just burning deep in your soul and you've got to get it out, you've <laughs> got to get an answer. Uh, you can always super chat. That's that little dollar sign that's right down there. You click that, you, you say a buck, whatever. And you can ask a question. Yeah, and it pops up big on our shot, screen. It pops up big on our screen. We don't miss that. You can, and uh, I think Bob's telling them too, you can kick that dollar sign. Uh, that's the way to get yourself noticed really quickly yeah. and right away. And Blake was in Casper yesterday. We could have called Blake and went to lunch. We could have called Blake and gave him Lincoln. <laughs> we had Lincoln with us. He was, Lincoln was good yesterday. He was good, but I think he would have been better with Blake. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> So basically, that's pretty much it for us. Uh, we're going to wrap things up, I guess, unless we have any more questions. Um, uh, do you, Well, here's a question. Uh, Ethan asked, do you charge for hunters? We do. We charge a trespass fee. Um, that's basically just for my time, um, you know, because I do have to go out with hunters. I do have to show them around. I do have to do that kind of thing. And then we have facilities that are available for hunters, freezers that are available for hunters. So the trespass fee takes care of all those costs, the electricity and all that kind of stuff. So um, we do have uh, a trespass fee for hunters. So, yeah. 
Uh, any other questions? Yeah, let's do this one one more. Have you thought, because I've seen this a couple times, have you thought about getting a John Deere 6200 two-wheel drive tractor? I honestly don't think I would ever buy a two-wheel drive tractor at this point. We're not really planning on buying any tractors right now. I don't think I would ever buy any tractor, but <laughs> I would hope not to have to buy a tractor at this point. Tractors are horribly expensive, and we're lucky enough that Gilbert left us some really nice equipment, so we really do try to take care of it. Uh, two-wheel drive tractor, I have a lot of, I've had friends in this area. Jason had a two-wheel drive mm -hmm. tractor. Had nothing but trouble with it. Uh, his was a 6400, um, but in, in this area, you know, if you've got four, if you have the choice, I would definitely go drive. with a four-wheel drive tractor. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Hey, Humphrey Family Holsteins, thanks for the chat. Aaron and Mike, good night. Good night, Ryan. Yeah, good night, Ryan. Um, okay, we should look into brute ropes, pulling calves. Uh, I usually use chains for pulling calves rather than OB ropes, but I totally get what you're saying. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Thank it's you guys for coming out right and hanging now. out with us. We've got uh, kids up at Grandma's house that we've got to get back down here and get them put to bed because they do have school tomorrow. Uh, we want to thank our moderators for coming out and giving us a hand. And if everybody would thank them too, because that keeps them coming back, he gives them that that you know that little bit of kudos. Uh, we had our moderator uh, Nash guy Bob tonight. Uh, we had Matt uh, from Chicago, and of course Blake from wherever Blake's from. Uh, Blake is. <laughs> Blake is actually down by Cheyenne. You can check out his channel. Uh, it's Guy and W-Y. So thank you to those guys for uh, hanging out with us and uh, making sure that everything was kept clean just like that. Thank you, Blake. And you guys have a great night. We will be back on Sunday with another ranch video. Tuesdays with our project video. Aaron will be back on Thursday with what? Garden planning. Garden planning. And actually, there's more to it than what you would think. It's all a big jumbo mess. Let's see if I can get it out. It is ridiculous. Aaron <laughs> drives me nuts with it. <laughs> I have a plan. Yep. It's just all in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, thanks for everybody for coming and hanging out Thank with us this time. We really do appreciate it. Um, feel free to shoot us any questions uh, down here. We're going to repost this on the replay. You can ask questions there as well. Make sure you subscribe. Click that bell button. Make sure you get all the notifications. Find us on Facebook for information that you can't find anywhere else. And, uh, and other Instagram. than that, and Instagram. And visit our website to sign up for the Herd Report. The for herd behind report. the scenes yeah. info on what happens every week here on Yeah, I think, I think the people that are here on the Herd Report actually dig it. Um, but yeah, check it out if you can. Other than that, uh, we'll see you next time. And until then, uh, you know what? Have a great week as always. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.